Anki is a toy company unlike any other. It was founded by three students at Carnegie Mellon University studying for PhDs in robotics. They wanted to leverage the advancements in computing, robotics and AI to create the next generation of toys where the physical and virtual worlds collide. The company's first product was Drive, a racing game which was essentially a combination of Scalextric and Mario Kart, allowing you to control real toy cars with your smartphone. But this was just the beginning and Anki is back with its second product called Overdrive which builds on the success of the original but takes things to a new level of complexity and depth. I had the chance to try out Overdrive ahead of its launch next September and speak to one of the co-founders, Boris Softman, who explained just what Overdrive is all about. Overdrive is the next generation of Drive. Um, it is uh, it's similar in that it's a battle racing game. You're racing these robotic cars, supercars that are upgradable, um, they're self-aware so you can compete against uh, cars that drive themselves and, uh, uh, and challenge you and sneak up behind you and uh, do all these crazy things. But um, there's a really big change uh, in, the, uh, in the system of overdrive in that the tracks themselves, they're completely modular. So you can reconfigure the environment to anything that you want and the cars will understand it perfectly and make use of it as if they were human opponents. By making something which is scalable, immersive and infinitely reconfigurable, as well as using advanced robotics and artificial intelligence, Anki is usurping the traditional idea of what a toy really is. We're not making toys in the traditional sense. We're making uh, what we feel is video games in the real world. And the result of that is that software defines every element of the gameplay. We're using robotics, AI, game design, new interfaces, and in the end, we're programming a video game on top of these characters. Each of these cars are not just you know, static, they're not remote control cars in a traditional sense. They're robots, they have a computer, they have sensors, they have wireless communication. They do precise controls algorithms to execute their speeds. By having them be able to understand their position, sense the track 500 times a second, relay that information, drive precisely, we can take a huge leap forward that nobody else could really make before, which is to be able to abstract away everything that's physical and treat these cars as if they were just virtual characters in the video game. Despite the huge advance of video games, the traditional toy industry has continued to thrive. The reason is people's desire to want to control something in the physical world, not just on screen. But Softman believes the industry hasn't even begun to scratch the surface of what is possible when these two worlds collide. The reason the toy industry has uh, you know, has stayed as, as strong as it has is not because of the gameplay, because in fact they haven't evolved in terms of gameplay capabilities nearly as much as they should have, and definitely not like the video game industry. But there's something really powerful to the physicality, the, something that you can touch and actually see in the real world that you can't compare on a screen. But what we're able to do is to create a vastly deeper level of character personality, interaction, and gameplay that's closer to what you're used to in the video game, but do this in, a, uh, in the physical world. So why aren't more toy companies trying to leverage the power offered by today's computing, robotics and AI technology? Softman is surprised this hasn't happened on a greater scale already. It is pretty surprising that um the, uh, that software hasn't changed the toy industry the way it has almost every other industry. And I think part of that is just tradition where the biggest uh, and richest skill sets in toys has uh, typically been um, uh, in managing brands, having really rich IP, great marketing, um, and you know having really low cost products, but ones that are based uh, you know, very, very heavily on kind of plastics and simple components. So I think, you know, to come at this industry with the sort of technologies that typically were used in kind of government projects and space and, uh, you know, defense and all these other things, it opens up a tool set to build products that weren't possible previously. And a lot of other companies haven't really thought about how to combine those tools in the same way. The Yankee co-founder says more companies are now beginning to look at the opportunities for using this technology to build something new. But Anki is already looking beyond this and using its game engine for the real world to help create a real life version of the Toy Story toy box. For us, what's really exciting is starting to think about this as a game engine for the real world. Um, in some sense, you know, we made a racing game. There's a lot of uh, you know, complexity to solve the underlying problems in positioning and motion control, path planning and so forth. But at the end of the day, it's less about racing and more about this ability for physical characters to perfectly understand their environment and be self-aware and come to life with software. So if you think about that as a stage or a canvas in some sense, you can start building very, very different types of products. And for us, um, you know, the exciting thing is to then start thinking about these as more general characters that maybe aren't even cars and start working towards Pixar and 3D where you now have the ability to uh, have a character that's so aware of its environment and its ability to express itself in that environment that you can start building a level of personality and emotion in those characters that really hasn't been 
possible outside of a screen. And this radical idea is something Softman believes could change the toy industry forever. The same reasons that toys have been so successful up till now because of that physicality, that level of, uh, of character and self-expression that we love so much in animated films and in video games, I think the impact of it is going to uh, be vastly more powerful in the real world.